In the last video we saw how we can display variables with a pie chart and I said that probably most of the time the better option is to use bar charts or bar plots and this is what we want to do this time. So this might this time also be a bit longer because um, there are a lot of options with bar charts but yeah it's worth it I think. So the easiest way to start off is to load your data, make a table like we did for the pie charts out of the specific variable that you want to show and then just throw this into the command that's called bar plot. We already saw that probably in the other videos and you get here a bar plot that gives you the number of cases for the different categories because they are displayed like that here in your table. And um, you also could do this in a horizontal way. For example, here giving the parameter horizon hor horiz equals to true. And then you get a horizontal display. And if you like to turn around the labels, we saw that we can do that globally with the par command, but we can also do that just for this plot by specifying here LR, LAS uh, should equal to two, for example, and then the labels are turned. Unfortunately, also the X axis here is turned, but yeah, probably this is the kind of display that you would like to achieve. Um, so here we see the absolute numbers and this is fine for displaying um, the the amount of, of data per category and actually it's most of the time it's preferable because absolute numbers are more honest than just displaying ratios but you could also achieve displaying ratios like uh, in a pie chart by using the prop table command to turn your absolute numbers here in your table into a prop table so to do that, I make a new variable that I call my prop table and I use the prop table command on my table and get now here the ratios and I can then just make bar plot again of my prop table you can see now we have here a ratio scale and not an absolute scale and we can see that this is here 23 percent roundabout. Um, we could also stack <coughs> these values onto each other so that we get just one bar with separation of uh, according to the different categories that sum up to 100 percent and to do so we have actually to turn our current a one-dimensional vector into a two-dimensional matrix. Um, so if I say we want to have a matrix from our prop table, I get this kind of output here and now you can see that the um, values are horizontal and whatever goes into a bar plot uh, vertical, sorry, whatever goes into bar plot horizontal is displayed side by side. On the other hand, whatever is uh, vertical here, so when it's a row, it also produces one column here, one, uh, yeah, one column of uh, different categories in just one bar. So when we add here bar plot, and throw it in. You can see that now we have one column here. If I would turn the matrix with the T command, I again get something where the bars are displayed side by side. So, and sorry, if I show you how this matrix then looks like, so we have one row and three columns, and accordingly we have three. Um, one row of uh, values in three columns or bars 
Well, if we have it like that, we have one column of values in rows and here accordingly we have rows of colors in one column. So the bar plot mirrors the structure of your matrix. I'm pretty sure you don't like this grayish color, although it saves uh, probably uh, money when you print that out, but you pr probably would like to have a more colorful display and we can achieve that in the same way like we had did that uh, with the pie chart. So we can define a color vector and we add the rainbow colors in there of the length of my prop table. So my prop table looks like this. The length is free. With this rainbow command we get three colors back. So those colors and then we can use the bar plot for my prop table. Color should equal to my colors. Then we get them side by side here in this situation. And if we add the matrix command here, we get them stacked onto each other with the different colors. Now we ha don't have an idea how what the colors represent, so we might like to add a legend here. And to do so, I only have to specify what the text of the legend should be. So legend legend text should equal to the names of my op, my prop table, which gives you this name vector back here, so A, B and C. And when I run this command, you can see now that there is a legend giving you the uh, meaning of the colors. And you probably don't like this uh, over plotting of the legend over the bar. There's probably a trick how you can avoid that. And that is just giving here um, a virtual extra column that moves the space so that this uh, bar is crammed into one corner here. Or you could it think the other way around. You expand your diagram to two columns, but the uh, second column is empty and there is where you put the legend. To do that, we add here x lim, so the limits of the x axis should equal to zero and 2. So the lowest value is 0 and the biggest value is 2. And with that this bar here is reduced to one column and the second column is free to place the legend there. Um, also like we did in the pie chart example we can add text labels directly to the plot and this time we use the command text. <coughs> Um, which <coughs> adds text to a plot. You can look up the uh, parameters here in the help file. We need an X and Y coordinate and the names of the labels. So let's do that. We need um, the... Where is it? Is values here as x uh, as y values and the x value should be 1 and the labels should be again the name of the prop table. If we run this this doesn't look very convincing. The reason for that is we stacked the values on top of each other. And if we look into the values here from the prop table, you can already see here, the first is at 23%. The A, that's okay. It's exactly there where it should be. Probably we should change the positioning of the label that is a bit lower. The next one is um, category B, that's 60%. And it's actually there where it should be. 
but we haven't added the a that's below that already so actually b should be here and that's the actual value plus the lower category and if we want to so this is a cumulative sum of the actual values here that we need to place the labels on their uh, correct position and to achieve that we can add the command cum sum for cumulative sum and i give you the output here so the first of the cumulative sum is 23 percent that's where the a is that's correct the second is 88 percent which is the first plus the second and that is round about here and the third is one so everything summed up that's where the c should go and that's up there if we run that and let me um, clean the plot again so you can see now everything is placed correctly the c is a bit out of the diagram so that's additional um, reason that we should lower the position of the labels and to do so i can use the pause for specify position specifier for text uh, parameter and i give that the value of one and clean the plot again and now we can see that our labels are placed on the right position um, next thing can be that we would like to give also the absolute numbers and the percentages for the different classes here and to do so we have to make our own label a bit more elaborate so i start with making a vector that I call my labels and i start with the names of the prop table that's fine that's what we at least want to have next thing we probably would like to have is oops my labels should not only contain what we currently have in my labels and i use the paste command to glue stuff together again um, we also want the absolute numbers and also um, something that shows that we display the absolute numbers so i use this comma n equals two and then the values of my table when i run this this is the result a comma n equals to four and here is an extra space because paste traditionally um or usually adds space this as separators between the values that it glues together we can suppress this by specifying sep equals to nothing and then we have something that looks okay but now we have here additional um, additional um, n equals two because we have overwritten our labels and here the variables that we produced here come in so we have to run the whole thing again and now this looks nicer we have now manually add here a space okay and here we go there's another function um, so this is a bit uh, annoying that you always have to type that there's another function that is called pace zero and with that we can leave yes, again this thing we can leave out this um, sep equals to nothing paste zero doesn't produce um, these spaces in between good um, now we probably also would like to add to this the percentages and we paste again what we had have already with my labels then we might like to add an opening bracket then round of my prop table by four digits and multiplying that by 100 which gives us so percentage values with 
three digits after the, the decimal separator. And we end this with another text that gives us the percent sign and a closing bracket. Okay, if I run this whole thing, now our labels look like they should. We have the category, the absolute number of cases and the percentage values here as our labels. And we can now use that in the kind of bar plot command that we used produced before, but we replace this simple just give us the names back with the content of my labels and oh sorry wrong place I didn't want to have that in the legend I wanted to have that actually here as the text values so again and now they are there they're a bit too long again so we can add um, line break probably we do that just here with the backslash n command which gives us a line break and we start the whole thing over it looks like that oh, probably the line break should be after the comma so here we go well and I can zoom this here and make that bigger or smaller and now we have them here and probably we also like to have this part more to the left so instead of specifying one here I can specify zero and remove this line break again uh, zero is probably not the optimal position let's say 0 0.5 now it looks fine let's add the space here and do it like that so now it looks probably like it should look okay so with this we can produce something comparable to what we achieved with the pie chart but now these differences between different categories are much easier to identify by the human eye than in the case where we have a round pi with area representing the, the values in this kind. Here it's the length and that's more fitted to the capabilities of the human eye. If we don't want to, or if we have multiple categories, this is not two-dimensional values this is not uh, displayable with pie chart or not easily but we can add, make kind of a 3d plot with uh, with bar charts without actually making this visually 3d but representing three dimensions of data at the same time and that's uh, the way here is that we put um, these stacked values Beside, I will give you an example. So I make my other table, and for that I make a table of the Münzingen the number of coils per fibule, and I specify that with the scheme of the fibula. And this table looks like that. So now we have in the columns the different uh, schemes and in the rows the different number of coils and in the individual cells we have the amount of uh, fibula that fall into this category. And again we can bar plot my other table. You can see now that we have the columns again represented here as columns in the plot and the rows represented here in different colors. And with this gray color scheme we don't see really the differences and we can't identify anything actually. So again we would like to have um, the rainbow color palette to make that more um, understandable. My 
colors two should equal to rainbow. And this time we need one, two, three, four, five cases. I could just enter here five or I make that again dynamic by um, saying that I want to have as many colors as we have rows in my other table. And now we have here five colors given. And I throw that in here as color parameter. And again, we have now the different colors representing the different number of coils. And I want to have a legend for that. So legend text should equal to the row names of my other table, because this gives us here these 3, 4, 6, 10, and 12. And then we have here the legend that giving us um, the colors back. Another way to present this is not to stack the individual um, values on to each other, but to display them side by side in a kind of fingerprint of the different schemes. To do that, I use the same command, but I add beside equals to true. And with that, you can see now the difference. Here we have individual bars within a group of bars representing the different um, number of calls for the different fibular schemes. And you can also turn that around by adding a horizontal equals to true. And now we have it here in a vertical and horizontal way displayed. And we add just as a last step a title and I name that number of calls per fibula scheme, fibula scheme and then we have here our title and a nice plot that we can use and it has much more options than the traditional pie chart. Just one um, additional information or uh, idea, the human eye or the human brain is usually capable of getting, uh, grasping five to six categories, uh, items on one time. And if we see more than five, six or seven, it depends on the, on the viewer, um, you have to look twice actually. So usually if you have this kind of grouping, you should limit yourself to displaying in one diagram six categories, for example, six groups of bars, and then within this group of bar, maximum six different bars. If it's more, it gets too complicated and you can only analytical see that. So to have a nice and easy to understand plot, you always should limit yourself to displaying six to seven classes at max. So this was it for the bar plot and I hope you will find this um, useful.